What's up, everybody? Ben Raz and Matt Kajewski here for Odd Shopper, and we are back talking all things college basketball. The tournament is rapidly approaching. Conference tournaments are imminent. So in the meantime, we've got to pick some winners on this Monday. If you are hopping in because it's the NBA All-Star break and you want some action, welcome aboard. Happy that you stopped in here. If you want to support us? Hit that like button. Easiest way to do it. And if you want to join the team, you want more picks from the NBA, college basketball, NHL, whatever you want we have, just press that subscribe button. Matt, Great time of the year. March is coming quickly. You've been in a quite a groove. I know it's Monday, not the best card, but we do have some bets on the board. Yeah, we're getting a lot of these makeup games. So the card's a little better than I thought. We at least have more games on the board. Some of these spreads are getting pretty tight. We obviously have a lot of information at this point, but I still think there's a lot of edges to exploit. There are. And, and you know, I'll be honest, and we, we found our three, and I feel good about them. There was a couple of other plays that I wanted to get to. You know, if, if you follow these videos, I tend to go for these egregious schools, under the radar schools. There's a lot of them playing tonight. I just didn't see a ton out there. And we were talking before the show, before we dive into the plays, Matt, about someone, you know, like a conference like the Big Ten, the parody and the difficult nature with these teams right now, a lot is in flux. For sure. And I mean, a lot of people don't want to hear this, but there's a lot of bad coaches in the Big Ten. So you have a team like Iowa, who is one good player. Maybe the spread should be like, four points in one of their games but if Keegan Murray gets two fouls in two minutes like he's sitting the whole first half and then if you have Keegan Murray, Murray out of a game like that's probably worth four or five points against the spread too so there's just a lot of volatility when betting some of these bad teams in the Big Ten that have bad coaches and we have a couple of those teams on the board tonight Indiana is a team that will bench players when they're in foul trouble luckily Trace Jackson Davis has one of the lowest foul rates in the country for big men, but he's got a tough matchup against Liddell. When I saw the spread at seven, it was to stay away from me too. I wanted to get to Indiana, but I couldn't quite do it. I may ask the card and certainly hop in our Discord if you want our full picks, but let's get into three that we are playing. So we're going, we're starting, and as I say this all the time because we are, uh, I'll, I'll chalk it up to us moving markets inception style because we haven't even <laughs> put it on the screen just yet. Florida State, they were just a one point underdog uh and they've ticked to a one point favorite anything around pick them or one is good for me this is a disappointing team lately but man boston college is a rough squad i know it's at home for them i lean to the Knolls, and i know you do talk a little about florida state yeah what what did the line move to uh, they're now a one point favorite okay yeah that's what i have it at i i did not see them as a dog there that would have yeah, been a bit plus one or just when I clicked into this about 20 minutes ago, they were plus one, minus 115. Interesting. Speaks to line shopping because that was never available to me. So I, if you could have found plus one or if you can find pick them still, make sure to hit that. Mm -hmm. It's a spot where Boston College has a team in disarray and we have both teams battling injury. I think Florida State, they've been a little more pronounced. Like they lost Polite, they lost Osborne and they lost McLeod really early in the year. And since the last couple of games have been played. They've also been battling injuries to Caleb Mills and Raekwon Evans. Both of them were game time decisions over the weekend, which suggests to me they're at least close to returning from injury. I honestly think this Florida State team is better than BC without these players, but if there's a chance we get one of Caleb Mills or Raekwon Evans back, I think the line will continue to move. And maybe that's why we've seen it move this morning. On the BC side, they're a team that also has injuries. They lost Frederick Scott pretty early in the year, and now Bickerstaff and Langford are both battling injuries here. And Langford left their most recent game, did not return. I'm not, it's a toe injury for him too. So it's not like this is a soreness thing that he can just work through. I don't know if we see Langford and this team already doesn't have depth or talent. If they lose their best player, this might move to like minus five. Yeah, at Florida State, listen, I, I've backed them a lot uh, in some disappointing spots. They've got blown out a couple times. They lost a home game to Pittsburgh, which is just unacceptable. But the talent disparity, they're just a better version of this BC. I don't worry about the road here. Uh, anything around this, even on the screen here, I mean, you could just take the money line at minus 115. You're paying five cents uh, because this line is bouncing. And I think there is a chance. You know, we talk about closing line value a lot. With all the unknowns, I think that Florida State has a much better chance to get back key personnel than BC does, and that could really balloon the spread. So this is one I would really suggest taking this early. I am with you, but it's that that's the theme of this video and the theme of college basketball right now is trying to infer who's available. And we go to the second pick in Baylor, four and a half point favorites in Stillwater against Oklahoma State. Baylor's all sorts of banged up, but some of their key pieces look like they're close who do you think is on the floor tonight and why do you think they can cover? 
Yeah, so Baylor has been dealing with injuries to Flagler, Cryer, and Chama Chachua. We know Chama Chachua is not coming back. His injury is significant. But with Cryer and Flagler, it was both listed as soreness in their most recent game. They both didn't take the floor. And, you know, Baylor still played pretty close in that game. And this is a spot where I think they're more talented than Oklahoma State, even without some of these players on the floor. But if we have Flagler or Cryer returning to the lineup, we should see them benefit drastically in another spot where the line would move. I mean, without them both, they beat a pretty decent TCU team by 10. So putting up 72 points in that contest, like James Akinjo is still there. He's been playing extremely well. You're getting extended minutes out of Soshan and like Kendall Brown, Flo Thamba. Some of these players have a lot of experience to begin with. It's just their depth that's hurt a little bit against Oklahoma State, a team that really struggles to score the ball. I'm not really sure this is a big worry here. If Baylor can just play with moderate efficiency, I think they could get it done here, minus four and a half. And there's a chance this moves quite a bit. This is a, yeah, I mean, I, I always respect Oklahoma State, particularly at home, but they just can't score. You, defensively, they're a pretty strong unit, but Baylor's still got enough. Uh, and I just look at Oklahoma State this year, time and time again, they've gotten to games they just don't really have, certainly Cade Cunningham's not walking through that door. Uh, just kind of a team without an identity to me. We're kind of buying low because I, I think, and I don't even know if you just said this, apologies if you did. If Baylor, if all the injury news is bad, I still think we're more than live laying four and a half if none of these guys return. Agreed. I think TCU is a better team than Oklahoma State. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Um, now, if some of them do return, this is where we're going to capture that value. So it's almost like a free roll in that sense. Even if everyone is held out precautionary, Baylor can cover this number. There's no doubt about it. But if we get one of those guys back, now we're looking at maybe Baylor creeping into the five and a half, six point favorite range. Ugly game. There will be some spells. Oklahoma State, I think, fights. But ultimately, Baylor, upper echelon, still an elite team. And Oklahoma State uh, has struggled. So we got two. We got Florida State on the board. We've got Baylor on the board. You're dragging me out west. Uh, I... Pack, I mean, I tell you what, just like football, I have no feel for this conference, but you have hit some of these totals and, and we've had them on these videos and they've turned out very well. Arizona State has finally turned the corner. They're playing much better. They got a big ass tonight, though, playing UCLA. They're a double digit uh, underdog, but the total sits at 134. Talk to me about the pace in this game. Yeah, I, I don't really remember the last time Arizona State wasn't a double digit dog, except their most recent contest where they played Oregon State, the worst team in the Pac-12, I think. I think they have one conference win. I don't know. How are they? Seen. How are they in the elite eight? No, I'll never understand that run last year. And they lost a lot of those guys too. So I mean, it, bad team overall. But overall, in this game, we have a spot where the pace is pretty good. We know Arizona State's a team that is going to play with pace. They're above average in terms of possessions. They average seventy-one and a half per game. But UCLA is actually playing with some pretty decent pace here too. They're up above seventy-one as well. So right away, that suits the over. And then how have these teams been playing? Right away, you have a UCLA team that's 28th in the country in offensive efficiency. They're going up against an Arizona State team, which has given up a lot of points at a lot of different points in the year. So that's a spot where I think you could capitalize right away. And then on the Arizona State side, they're a team that ranks outside the top 300 in offensive efficiency. But obviously, that's a season-long stat. And when we look at how they've been playing recently, it's been much, much better. They're over 60 points in five of their last six with four of those contests above 70 points. And in two of them, they've scored over 80. The first time they played UCLA, it was a three overtime game. So there, there's a little bit of context here that needs to be added, but 87, 84, and they ended up winning. So they've already played UCLA close once this season. And it's not even that I think they're going to win the game, but I think it'll be competitive enough and fast enough where the over makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, if they can even keep contact, one of the things in college basketball, particularly when you're betting overs is, and it's hard to gauge this, but if you can get in that magic zone where fouls uh, are the last two minutes of a game, I mean, that's like 15 extra points. And in a spread like this, certainly if Arizona State covers, they're probably going to be fouling late in this game. And that is a lot of points when you look at just a 134 total. So uh, they have turned the tour. I think you can't use season long data for them. If you really hone in on this smaller sample size, even games they've lost. I watched them against Arizona a couple times. Uh, they're just playing better. Credit to them. They've got the talent. Don't think they're going to win tonight, but I do think it stays competitive enough where the over looks good. Certainly can get in live if it's a slow start. But there you've got it. you got Florida State. 
one point favorite and on the move. Baylor, four and a half point favorite going into Oklahoma State. And now we like the over in the late game for Arizona State and UCLA. Stay tuned. Matt is doing, you're doing these every day, correct? College yep, every day. Pick? Every single day. You have been on quite a run. I need to catch up. I've been on a little, little cold streak, and that's where we're going to bounce out of it here. But for me, for Matt, for everyone at Odd Shopper, thanks again for hopping in and stay tuned for even more college basketball as the tournament approaches. Good luck tonight, and we'll talk to you guys soon.